They always told me that, persigue tus sueños. And, and that's what I did. I chased my dreams. This is the first ever Collins Cup. All the greatest athletes are here. Team Europe. Team Internationals. Team US. For the first time in history, the road to the Collins Cup starts here. There's no fear really when you go to start line. I just like to focus on my job and show what I can do on the race day. Cinco. Being the best, I guess, the person to cross the finish line first. For me, to be honest, the process and the journey what matters. To be an elite athlete, it takes hard work. It takes talent and you need to be committed. I might say, how was your session? And he'll say, it was okay. Like it wasn't, it was normal. But then his training mates might tell me like, what wow, he did amazing times. It's not that he doesn't believe in himself. He's just always wanting to perform at the best that he can. I achieved more success than I ever imagined when I started a long time ago. So I just put all my effort and tried to be the best. There are always things missing as an athlete. I won so many races, world titles in different categories and all that. There are always races that you would like to win. I'd like to be Olympic champion. i like to win another world title even though I won five ITU and, and other disciplines, but it's not so much about winning a certain race, but the process. If you want to be professional, you have to cross the finish line first, you know, get good results. You're gonna be judged by what you do on the race day. You definitely think of your rivals when you train, even though you cannot control what they do, but you know their strengths, their weaknesses. But you come more across as a controlled person, calm person, and maybe like the silent assassin. How do you relate to that? <laughs> yeah. My character is, is I'm pretty calm and I like to have things under control. And I like to train very well and do my preparation very well, the way I train or if I'm going to beat this guy or not. If he wins a world title, it's not like, wow, that was amazing. It's like, okay, now we go training. He's pretty, yeah, flat line level. <laughs> I don't like to talk too much in social media and create a weird atmosphere with other athletes. I just like to focus on my job. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how many races you won before, because you have to prove exactly that day at that race. If you want to win, it doesn't matter what you won before, you have to be good on that day. There are always moments when you, you're a bit negative um, because of the way you feel or things that happen in your life, but it's important to try to shut the negative voice and always focus on the positive. I was 16 and I uh, was at the training center in Madrid and they have a, a check, it was something like a routine and they found like one of the valves in my heart was a bit different. The discussion started whether I was able to do the sport at the highest level or not. Some people thought I, I shouldn't, other people thought I should. As a young athlete and with the support of my family, we looked for more opinions. We went to the best cardiologists in the world actually. At the time, it was really hard because of the Federation, they didn't want to let me race, so the medical side was pretty clear, but, you know, the, the admin part of it was quite complicated. To be honest, when I was in the check, they didn't tell me anything. I knew it was taking too long, or <laughs> longer than other friends or other artists that went before. 
So I didn't really know what was going on and they didn't tell me much, but then they wrote their report and it was clear. I remember reading the words that I was not allowed to do trials at the highest level or be part of the national team. Obviously that was pretty tough. But once we checked with other doctors, other cardiologists, and they thought that I could do the sport without any risk, then it was very frustrating not, not having the opportunity to, to race. I was frustrated, and I think I was a promising young kid, but that was all, you know. I didn't know if I was gonna be world champion or if I was gonna be a professional athlete, but I knew that I really liked the sport and wanted to do it. And once I was sure that my health wasn't in any risk. I just decided to fight for that right. And with the help of some people, we managed to, to get my license back. But that was a long process, it took a couple of years, and I lived many unfair situations. But I guess like anything in life, where it doesn't kill you, make you stronger. My family, they always supported my decisions even though sometimes you make mistakes when you are 16, but they clearly knew that this was my passion, sport. I wanted to be an athlete. He's really good at seeing like it is what it is, but this was kind of out of his control. But I hope that I can support him and when we travel the world and train, I can help him achieve his goals as well. They knew that I was very serious about my training and about doing sport at a high level, so they, they supported me and they always encouraged me to follow my my instinct in that way. <laughs> they always told me that, persigue tus sueños, and, and that's what I did, you know, I chased my dreams. You know, you don't really know why you feel bad or you feel good. Sport sometimes is an art, it's not a, you know, pure science, there's science behind it, but there's a, a little bit of uh, art as well. The Con Cup is a very exciting format that we are all looking forward to, to see how it is, you know, and how it feels racing and representing Team Europe. We like the idea, but I guess we need to feel it and, and be there in the competition and the representing a team that you never represented before. But it's really exciting. I hope after my uh, Olympic Games, you know, my career will be more focused towards long and middle distance. Keep winning races, keep, uh, keep achieving good results so I can be part of Team Europe. You're racing against another two athletes, really. So that changes the racing dynamics. And it's very important, like, the role of the captains, you know, to choose the right team, who's racing who, that could make the difference between winning or not winning. So it's a very exciting format, and it's, I said, it's something new for everyone. You don't really know what to expect, you know. You're going to see some surprises, but it's going to be really good to, to watch for the spectator as well. The main difference is the, that we are racing by regions, you know, Europe against America or against the rest of the world, and that's that never happened before in triathlons. We're going to have the best athletes competing. Yeah, you have to change your mindset. You have to think at the moment what's best for the team and, and, and work according to that, not just your individual or, or thinking of your strengths. You have to think of the other guys' strengths and weaknesses and try to take the right decisions for the team, not for yourself. It's a step forward for the sport and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited and, and proud to be witnessing all this. The work ethic is really important and the consistency. Not a few weeks, not a few months, but through years, you know. Never give up when you don't achieve the results you want to achieve or when things are not going that well. Always keep going and, and keep finding ways to improve. The inaugural Collins Cup. You do not want to miss this.